Hi everyone, in this video, we're gonna teach you how to create a simple and easy slideshow using Lightroom. Let's get to it. I'm Jeremy Martel with JM Photography and I'm an award-winning wedding and family photographer. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to be teaching you how to build a simple, easy, professional slideshow using Lightroom. If you like this video and you'd like to stay up to date with the videos we release, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified. Be sure to stay around to the end of the video for a bonus tip on how to add extra polish to all your slideshows. We will also be providing you a download that will get you creating these slideshows right away. Slideshows are a great way to showcase the best images from a wedding or a session. Once created, you can post them to your blog, Instagram feed, or share them with your couples and their families. We've created hundreds of these slideshows that our couples absolutely love, and you can check them out by visiting our website, jamstudios.ca, and clicking in the top menu bar on Weddings to load the wedding site, or by just directly navigating to jamweddings.ca. Once you're on our wedding website, navigating over to the blog link and on the right hand side under blog categories, either clicking on wedding photography or reception slideshows. So let's head over to Lightroom and get started. The slideshow can be created from either an existing Lightroom catalog or a new one. Either one will work the same. At our studio, we use a new catalog for every shoot we do. So for this example, I've created a new catalog. If you're using an existing Lightroom catalog, just create a new collection containing the photos you'd like to use in your slideshow. I've already prepped all the photos I'm going to use for this example and loaded them to the new catalog I created. Here we have 67 photos from some of our most recent weddings we photographed. The first thing you will need to do once you've selected the photos you want to use is press Command A on a Mac or Control A on a PC to select all the images in the library or collection. Once all the images have been selected in the top right hand corner, click on the slideshow module. This will load your default slideshow template for your Lightroom library. For me, it's the caption and rating template. It might be something different for you. However, that doesn't really matter because on the left hand side, we have the template browser and we're going to use our studios template called JM Simple Slideshow and we will select that. Now that we have the template selected, the first thing you will want to do is click on the create saved slideshow button. We will name it test slideshow. However, you can name it anything you want. And then I'll click create. What this is going to do is create a special collection that is specific to the slideshow we are creating. You can tell it's different from your standard collection, which looks like a folder, as this one has a play button on it. What this enables you to do is head back over to the library module and reorganize the images in that collection in any way you want. You can sort them by file name, capture time, or create your own custom order. Once you have them all in the order you want, you can head back over to the slideshow module and you can see the order that you have created will be reflected in the film strip below. You can also reorder the images here too if needed, but personally, I prefer to do these adjustments in the library module. Now, I've already taken the time to organize all the photos in preparation for this video, and I have that in a saved slideshow collection called JM Simple Slideshow. Selecting that collection and then clicking on the slideshow module will load all those photos in the custom order I created and the template we would like to use is called JM Simple Slideshow. Now we are ready to walk you through the options that we have selected for this template. The options can be found over on the right hand side and the very first section is called options. The first option is zoom to fill frame, which fills out the entire frame with the photo. I'm not a fan of this as I prefer to use the original aspect ratio of the photos I have selected. So for our template, it's not selected. For this slideshow, I've added a one pixel stroke and border. You can change that, but I really like the pinstriping effect around the edges of an image on a black background. You can also change the color of it and even turn it off if you'd like to. Cast and shadow allows you to add a shadow to the images on the screen. This is best suited to slideshows created with a white background. I don't really care for this look either, so I don't use it. 
The next section is called Layout, and this section allows you to adjust the spacing around the image being displayed. For this template, I've set it to 40 pixels around all edges of the photo. However, you can customize this to any size you want, or by unclicking Link All, adjust it to offset the image in any way you see fit. We'll type back in 40 pixels to reset this to the values for this template. Show Guides will let you visually see where the image will appear. I like having this selected as it doesn't display in the final export. Finally, there is the Aspect Preview. Screen will adjust the slideshow to the screen you are connected to, or you can specifically select widescreen 16x9 or standard screen 4x3. For this template, I have it set to widescreen as that is the aspect ratio I would like it to always display in. The next section is called Overlays, and I personally don't use this section all that often. However, some of you might find the watermarking feature useful, as it watermarks each individual image and not the outside frame of the video, which is really cool. Adding an identity plate just puts whatever you have typed in or loaded into the corner of your slideshow. Watermarking adds the watermark that we were just talking about, and you can see that being added to the image, not the video frame here. This is really handy on vertical images as it keeps the watermark on the image. Typically, I don't brand my slideshows, but nonetheless, it's a pretty cool feature that might come in handy some of the time. You're also able to display the photo rating, add a text overlay, and add a shadow to that text. However, I don't use these features. Scrolling down from there is the backdrop section. If you wanted to add a color wash or gradient fill to the backdrop, you can do this with any combination of colors you choose. You can add a background image behind your photos or change the background from black to any color you want. I prefer black as a background and that's what it's set to for this template. Next is the title section. You have two options here to configure how your slideshow will start, so your intro screen, and how it will end, the ending screen. Disabling these options is easy as you just uncheck intro screen or ending screen. This will remove them from the slideshow and each time you check or uncheck one of these options, Lightroom will provide you with a quick preview of what the intro and ending will look like. If you want a blank screen at the beginning of your slideshow, uncheck add identity plate. The color of the screen can be customized by clicking the color picker in the top right hand corner. This template uses a black intro screen. Clicking the drop down arrow in the lower right hand corner of the identity plate preview will give you access to the presets, where you're able to create presets for identity plates you frequently use. This template uses our standard intro bride and groom, as it can be customized by clicking edit to anything we want to type in. For this slideshow, we'll name it 2019 Highlight Real. And once we're done, we'll get a preview of what it'll look like. The same thing can be done for the ending screen. And for this option, I'd like to display my studio's brand logo. The options in this section are the same as the intro screen, so I'm not going to go over them again. The only difference here would be we are using an image as opposed to text. All of this can be customized by clicking the edit button like we did for the intro. And instead of using text as the identity plate, we'll select use a graphical identity plate and then locate the file. Once you have that completed, you can click the OK button to move on to the next section. In the music section, if you click the plus button, it will load a finder window to select any audio file on your computer to use as a soundtrack for the slideshow. For our example, I have already prepared an audio file for this slideshow. It's located on our desktop. I'll select it by clicking on the file, and then I'll click the Choose button to add it to Lightroom. If you're interested in learning how I cut the soundtracks for our slideshows and videos, leave us a comment below. Our next section is called the Playback section, which provides you with all the controls to customize how the music is handled when the slideshow is played. Most of these options are pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail about them, but just briefly go over each option. You can sync the slides to the music or fit the entire slideshow to the duration of the music. You are also able to adjust the duration each image displays and transitions to the next slide 
For this template, I've chosen two seconds for each as I find that works out to a really nice, easy transition between each of the images. You can prioritize the audio balance between a video clip's audio and the soundtrack for the slideshow. Enable or adjust the speed of your pan and zooms applied to each slide. And choose to repeat the slideshow or randomize the order of the photos. Finally, when multiple displays are attached to your computer, you can select the playback screen you want the slideshow to display on, and then adjust the quality of the slideshow when you click the play button. The preview button will preview the slideshow in the center window of Lightroom, whereas the play button will load the slideshow to the full screen. Both will start from the image that is selected, so if you want to start from the beginning, you need to click on the first image. And once playback has started, all you need to do is click the escape key to return back to Lightroom. So now that we have the slideshow looking exactly the way we would like it to, it's ready to be exported. The export video button is located in the lower left hand corner of the screen and clicking this button will load the export video window. In the save as field, give your slideshow a name. We'll type in 2019 highlight reel. Select the location we want it to export to. In this case, we'll send it to our desktop and then we'll set our video preset. I always choose 1080p as this is the highest resolution available. And if I need anything smaller, let's say for like Instagram, I would just downsample the 1080p version using Premiere Pro. And then you click the export button. If you're interested in learning how we prep our video content for Instagram, let us know in the comments below. Now that the export is complete, we can head over to our desktop, open up the slideshow and test it out. You're welcome to head over to our channel to check out the slideshow as we'll have it loaded there. I'll also have a link in the description below and it's playing right here in the corner as you can see. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch our whole video. Now let's get to that bonus content I had mentioned at the beginning of the video. What I'm going to show now is how we find great music for our slideshows. For our wedding couples, we usually mix their slideshow to their first dance song, but 99% of the time, that song will have a copyright attached to it, meaning you won't be able to post that to your website, blog, or YouTube channel. What you will need is a licensed track, and for that, we recommend either Epidemic Sound or Envato's Audio Jungle. But what if you don't have the budget for licensed tracks? Well, we've got you covered there too. On YouTube, there are several channels dedicated to providing free music to content creators. Two channels I especially like are Audio Library, where I found the music for this video that you're watching right now, and Breaking Copyright, where I found the music for the slideshow we created in this tutorial. On these channels, the video will have download instructions and credits for the artist in the video description below. They ask in return for using the song they created that you cut and paste the credits in your video description. This helps promote their channel and the artists that compose the music. Now, you're always welcome to create your own preset from what I taught you in this video. However, if you wanna save some time and get creating right away, I provided a download link to this template in the description below. It's my free gift to you and hopes that you'll subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for checking out our video. Leave us a comment below and let us know what you'd like to learn next. I'm Jeremy Martel, and I'll see you over at jmstudios.ca. Till next time, cheers.